and on to the light. May God address the reading of the word. Three, uh, three ministers had, were gathered around and they were talking about proper prayer. And one said he thought the key to proper prayer was the hands. He said, you know, you need to have the hands pointed towards the heavens or your hands lifted up. He thought that was the key to proper prayer. And another one said, well, no, I think prayer is only properly done if it's on its knees. And while they were doing this, there was a telephone lineman. He was working on the line behind him. And then the third one said, no, you're all wrong. The proper prayer can only be done laying flat on your face in a humble position to God. And after listening to this, the, the, the telephone man couldn't keep quiet anymore. He said, i got to tell you guys something. He said, you know, the most sincere prayer I've ever prayed is when I was dangling upside down from a pole held on by a string 40 feet above the ground. You know, the threat of death has a way of clearing our minds about things, doesn't it? It makes us realize what's important, doesn't it? When you're faced, if you've ever been faced with a life or death, so all of a sudden things become very crystal clear. It doesn't matter who's going to wash the car later on today or who's going to go get groceries. Those things don't become important anymore. It doesn't matter if I have a new, uh, enough money to buy a new car. Irrelevant. It's not even on your mind. What's on your mind at this point is what? Survival. That's kind of where Jonah found himself today, in the belly of the whale. Surrounded by sea and water. You know, but how did you get here? Now, some of you have been here, we've been studying this for a couple of weeks. I'll give you a brief catch up. Jonah was a prophet of God. God called Jonah to go to. Anybody know? Nineveh. Nineveh. There we go. We're going to Nineveh. But Jonah said, eh, not going. One. Don't like those people. Ain't no way. Don't care about them. I ain't going. So he goes down and catches the boat, not to Nineveh, but to. Tarsus, wrong direction. One's east, one's west. He's heading in the wrong direction. Big storm comes. Oh, got part. Jonah goes and takes a nap. Big storm comes. Jonah doesn't wake up. Everybody's going crazy. They're praying for their gods. What happens? Guy goes and wakes up. Jonah says, "Get up! Why are you sleeping? Can you pray to your god." You know this. They throw lots, kind of like rock paper scissors. They're trying to find out who's responsible. Falls on Jonah. Jonah confesses, "It's me." They said, well, who are you that would bring this about on us? And he says, what? I am a Hebrew. I worship the one and only God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. The one true God is my God. He said, well, what do we do to fix this? He says, what? Throw him in the water. They said, we ain't doing that. We'll row to shore. So they try to row to shore. It doesn't work, right? They try to fix it themselves. It doesn't work. Finally, they pray to... God, the one true God, Jonah's God, not their God, for forgiveness because what they're about to do is you know, we're going to have to throw this guy. Please don't hold this murder. We're throwing this guy in the sea against us. If that's what you want, we're throwing him in the sea. We're going to take care of it. So they throw Jonah overboard and sail off to Tarsus, singing God's praise to the one true God. So we've got a boat of missionaries still going to Tarsus. Jonah's in the sea. God sends a big fish, well, whatever, whatever works for you. Goldfish, I don't care. Anyway, a big fish to pick up Jonah with one key thing. You can swallow him, but don't chew him. Chew him, there you go. So Jonah's where we find Jonah today. He's in the belly of the whale. Or the big fish, whatever works for you. So he's in the be this belly. Now that's got to be a bad place to be. You think about that. And when you read the description, it says, you know, the waves, you know, the fish is swimming along, the way water's coming in, so the salt water's knocking to the side. You know, he probably can't even stand up. It's so slippery and slimy, and there's dark. He can't see seaweed wrapped around his head. You know, if you ever been to the water, been in the ocean, stand out there and the waves just like, <laughs> knocks you down. Those are some powerful stuff. So that's what he's experiencing. Boom! He's getting knocked around, getting beat up, and he's in this thing. And you know, not to mention it's probably what it stinks in there, right? You know, it probably doesn't smell good. Sushi to the right, me sushi to the left. I mean, sushi ever? It doesn't. It doesn't smell good. <laughs> It stinks. Life ever stink for you? That's where John is at. Sometimes life just stinks, right? And that's where we're at today. John finds himself in the middle of life that it just stinks. It's not good. It's not down. We're not, we're not liking where we're at, right? We've probably been in worse places. But we're not liking, looking, liking, looking, 
we're not liking where we're at today, right? Have you ever been there? I've been there. Sometimes by own accord, I get myself in those situations where I'm like, I ain't liking the way I, where I'm sitting today. And then, you know, <laughs> I should rather be somewhere else. But, you know, my own going, I put myself here. You know, sometimes God convicts us that way. You know, we, we start running away from God and, and start doing things we're not supposed to do. And God kind of brings us back to the truth, right? And that's where we're at today. That's hard. That's not a good place to be. It's not where you want to be. It's not a fun place to be. It's not, as my daughter says, it's, it's not bunnies and cotton candy. Dad. It's not, okay. It's not a good place. It's not, a, it's not a place you want to be. And that's where we find ourselves sometimes. That's life. Right? That's we. We agree on that? We all get to those places at some point in our life where we just, we're not real happy for our own accord or, or whatever. Whatever reason we got there, we're not happy where we're at. Things aren't going well. That's where Jonah finds himself. And what does he do? He prays. This whole thing's a prayer. This whole chapter is a prayer where he prays to God. It's a description of what he did. He prayed the song to God. Best move he made since he left, since he got word to uh, to go to them. He comes back to God. He starts praying. You know, and that's what we need to do. Make sure that we're involved in prayer. Everybody knows what prayer is. Prayer is just a conversation between you and God. Not hard. Because oh, it's, I can't pray those beautiful prayers. I can't. I can't. I don't have those kind of words. Mm -mm. It's not about the words. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. It's just a conversation between you and your Creator. And He wants to hear from you on a regular basis. You know, God's biggest thing is He wants a relationship with you, and He wants to. That relationship involves conversation. I don't know if you know that. You look at kids today, you know, I wonder sometimes how they have relationships because all they do is text. <laughs> you know, how are you today? I'm good. <laughs> Want to go out? I'll think about it. I don't know. I don't know how they have those relationships. They don't ever they talk to each other face to face. They just they just text. I don't know. I don't know how long. I guess it works for them. I don't know. But it is a man, I'd be <laughs> dude. <laughs> okay, that's how fast I text. But I mean, I never, no, I would never talk to anybody. Like that. <laughs> anyway, but getting back to the, it's it's about having a conversation with God and coming to God, and realizing in that conversation between you, you're not equals. God is God, and you're you. And we need to come humbly before God and realize we're not. You know, sometimes we want to get to a conversation, we find ourselves in a bad situation, but we want to convince God that we're right, right? He needs to see things our way. You need to come on over, God. Come on over. You know, and that's not the way it works. It reminds me of a story of a, of a, of a young man who got in trouble and got sent to his room. You know, he got sent to time out. And uh, he came back a little bit later. He said, you know, I'm sorry. For, I'm sorry. You know, I thought about what I did and I prayed about it. He said, well, that's great. That's great. If you, you know, if you ask God to help you, you know, to be a good boy, He'll help you. He said, well, I didn't exactly pray that. I just prayed that He would help you put up with me. <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes that's how we, we don't want to change. We just want God to come on over. But we got to come to God humbly. Realize that we're not perfect people. We're all broken. Anybody here not broken? Because I, I mean, I think everybody's broken in some way. We need to go to God and surrender ourselves to God. You know, it's kind of like when you go, I don't know if you've ever been on a and you come up to the dock. And you throw the, the line in, and either somebody puts it on there on the pole, or you you so good you can throw it around the pole, and you start to pull pull it in, right? What are you doing? Are you pulling the dock to you? No, you're pulling the boat to the dock, right? You're pulling yourself towards the dock. And that's the same way we need to affect prayer. We don't we don't come to prayer saying, "Hey God, I need you to do this, this, and this." You don't need to try to enforce your will on God. You need to bring God. You need to bring yourself closer into God's will, His plan, what He wants done. You have to be in touch with that. You have to open yourself up to that. It didn't just come. People say, "Well, God doesn't talk to me." I don't know. You say God speaks to me, and I got to tell you, maybe you need a timeout. Maybe you need to be like John to get put in timeout. Because sometimes God puts us in timeout. He puts us over there so we we get 
get rid of all the distractions. You know, kind of like the guy hanging off that, that, that telephone line. You know, all of a sudden, everything becomes very clear. You know, I need to talk to God. And sometimes God puts us in time. Kind of puts us away from things. Gives us time to think. He gives us time to tune out the world and tune in to what He's telling us. Right? Remember that? That's the key thing today. I want you to think about that. We need time to tune out the rest of the world. In other words, we need to cut off that TV. We need to cut off that internet. We need to put our phone on vibrate or whatever it is or put it down. We need to get time away, some quiet time. Spend that with God. Now all the moms are saying, yeah, I'm in for that. <laughs> you know, but we all need to do that, right? We need to spend some, you need to take some part of your day, no matter where it is. It could be morning for some people, it's night for other people, middle of the day, maybe all day. But you need to find some time each and every day to spend some quiet time with God. You need to take your Bible. And I just well, I want you to remember this. You might want to write it down if you ain't got damn far. You know what? When you go to that Bible every day, in that time, I want you to pray this to God. God, show me the truth about me. I'll say it again. God, show me the truth about me. That should be your prayer. And then spend some time. And don't spend time talking all the time. You ever been in a conversation where somebody just talks? <laughs> but. But, can't get a word in your hands. Now think about that in conversation. If that's how you talk to God, you're in a conversation with God. And if you're like, ah, God trying to say, but, you know, and a lot of times that's how we come. We get prayer. Here's my list, God. Let me tell you. See, I got, I got some money problems. I need you to take care of that. I need you. I need you to, I need to, this one's sick. I need you to take care of that. This one, all right, got to go, God. You know. Spend some time listening for the answer. Spend some time listening to what God will tell you. If you listen, it is amazing what God will tell you if you're willing to open up your ears and your heart and your mind and listen for a word from God. It's probably not going to come in the form of a burning bush. I think that one's already been taken. It's probably going to come in a small, still voice in that quiet. And it's the Holy Spirit. And He's probably going to convict you of some things. That maybe you didn't want to know about. It. Maybe you didn't want to hear about. It. Because we're all broken. Because we all got room for improvement. And he's probably going to bring them up. He said, you know, you need to worry more about the words you say. Maybe you need to be more careful about how you talk to people. Maybe you need to show a little more respect and love to people when you when you meet them on the street. I don't know what your brokenness is. Maybe you need to forgive. Maybe you need to let that go. I'll take care. I got this. Just let that go. Let it eat you alive. Maybe that's what it'll say to you. I don't know. But He will speak to you. And He'll change your life if you let it. And He'll change your attitude. And He'll change who you are. But you got to be open to it. You can't just go in there and say, well, you know, I don't know, maybe. Mm -hmm. That works for other people. It's not going to work for me. Give it a shot. If I'm wrong, come back and tell me. I'm guaranteeing you I'm not wrong. That's a guarantee. You don't need to be a little. He will speak to you if you listen. Right? So Jonah, let's look at the scenario here. Jonah's in the way. He's praying. He's humbled himself and he's praying. He said, Lord, I'm in a bad way. The water's washing over me. I mean, you you rescued me from the from the from this terrible situation. You know. And I don't know about other people, but he says, I, I promise you this. I'll let everyone know that salvation comes from God. Does that change today? No, same message. Salvation comes from God. It's a simple message. And what happens then? God shows His amazing grace again. Right? You know, how many times has he shown amazing, outrageous? We talked about, you know, really, it's more than amazing, it's more outrageous grace. How, how many times has he shown that to, to Jonah? Just in this little, wait a minute, two chapters in? How many times has he, you know, Jonah says, no, I'm leaving, I, I'm not in for that. I'm not. 
He pursues, right? He doesn't say, he doesn't send the lightning bolt to crash the ship, let Jonah drown. No, he, he, he goes and he pursues that relationship and brings him back. He puts him in the water, but he saves him, right? Amazing grace. He doesn't, he doesn't destroy the, the other sailors. They convert, they move on. It's all about his amazing, amazing, amazing grace that he has for us. He wants us to be in that relationship. He desires to forgive our brokenness. But we need to come to Him. And Jonah comes to Him. You know, we sing about that grace. Song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound Same. saves a wretch like me. I once was lost in the foul. Was blind. But now I see. It's amazing grace. It is. It's something we don't deserve. That's why I call it outrageous. It's so, I mean, it's so obscure. I mean, it, it embraces people who are bad. Not just good folks like me. <laughs> bad people. That's what we all say, right? Some other people that are bad. I'm just kind of bad, just a little bit. But, but it, it embraces all of us. It's there for everyone. You just have to receive it. Sadly, many want to unwrap the gift. How sad is that? What a wonderful gift that is. But we need it. It's on the table. I don't see It's that amazing, amazing grace that God gives us. You know, what does He do? What happens here? What, how does He show grace? He tells the fish what? He says, vomit him off the thing. I look at the Hebrew word translation for vomit. It's vomit. So anyway, he uh, doesn't translate any different. So he vomits him onto the shore. So so here we go, and, and, and that's probably not the ride he wanted. <laughs> but he gets back to shore, right? He's delivered. He's delivered from his circumstances. You know, how many of us are praying to be delivered from our own circumstances? You know, we want out. I don't know what I don't know what brought me here, or I do know what brought me here, but I know one thing. Jonah couldn't have got out of that fish by himself. If he would, he wouldn't have spent three days in there. Right? Nobody spends three days in the belly of fish because they want to. Right? He could have got out by himself, he wouldn't have. It took God's grace to get him out. So there he goes. He lands on the beach, covered in shrimp cocktail, <laughs> ready to go, right? Ready to go proclaim the word that salvation comes from God. You know, he was able to hear that word because he was tuned out to the world. All the other distractions were gone, and he could finally tune in to what God had to say to him. And that's how we need to be. You know, Jonah, 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 Jonah points us towards Christ. You know, who else spent three days? Bringing it came out, salvation came out. You know, that's a wonderful gift that God's given us. He sent His Son to come and live, to teach us how to live, and to die for each and every one of us. A cruel death, a painful death on the cross, that our sins, each and one of us, and our brokenness can be forgiven, that we may be whole, made whole again, that we one day, each of us will believe. We'll spend eternity with our Father in heaven. What a glorious day that would be. A day when no one hurts. There are no more back pains. Right? There are no more heart palpitations. There are no more cancers. There are no... What a great day that would be. It's a great day. It's a great hope. But that's what it's about. It's about that salvation. It's about that promise of a better day. All of us find ourselves in the belly of a whale sometime, or dangling from a line, and need a pain. But we need to remember every day is a day for prayer. You don't need to be in the belly of a fish to pray. Sometimes praying will keep you out of the belly of the fish. It'll keep you out of those hard times because that spirit will guide you in where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. There's no guarantee that hard times won't come because they surely will. They always do for everyone. There's always a time of trial, of tribulation, a time where, where our faith is tested. And sometimes it's hard to believe. But everyone knows that usually, normally, that's when you feel closest to God. That's when you 
remember that you were supposed to be praying all along. You know, it's like that long lost friend you had talked to, but when you, you know, your boyfriend dumps you, I was like, oh, I got to call somebody. <laughs> you won't believe it. You ain't talked to that friend in months. Why? Well, I, I was so busy with this other stuff. It's kind of like, God, you know, I've been so busy, God, I had not had a chance to call you, but now I got dumped. I need to talk to you. you know, God needs to be more than a 911 call. You know, he's there for that, but he needs to be more than that. He needs to be a priority. He doesn't just need to be a priority. He needs to be the priority. So my challenge to you this week is to tune out. To send yourself a time. You're all being punished. Got some homework here. You're all being punished. Send yourself a time out this week. Sometime another day, and I don't care if it's five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you need, spend some time with God. Take a few minutes. Open up that Bible. Read your passage. Before you do, pray to God this. Show me my the truth about me. Show me, so show me the truth about me. Show me where my weaknesses are. Show me where I need to improve. Show me where I need to change. Show me what I'm doing wrong. Show me what I'm doing right. You know, it's not all about doing wrong. But show me. Talk to me, God. I want to hear from you. And I don't want to be in the belly of the fish when I hear. Amen? Amen. Amen.